Hello Calculus AB students. Thanks for tuning in to watch our video solutions of the free response questions that were assigned this week. This video covers Unit 1 free, re free response question set A. There are two questions, question 1 and question 2, that will be posted in two separate videos. I have 15 minutes to post this video which will cover question 1. Alright, if you have not done so, please pause and read these directions, and I'm going to highlight a couple of things in there when you're done. Okay, here's some important information for you. Here's our routine for the next few weeks. Each week we'll assign four free response practice on AP Classroom. You'll submit those four assigned free response questions by Thursdays at 3 o'clock. Video solutions that we prepare will be uh, for each of those assigned free response questions will be posted on Fridays. If you have your free response questions on AP Classroom submitted by 3 o'clock on Thursday, that will give us time to grade them over the weekend so that we can talk about them the following week in a Zoom session or if you have questions. Alrighty, if you read carefully, I've underlined what I think are some important parts of these directions. You need to show all of your work. Justifications are required that give mathematical reasons. For the AP exam, answers without supporting work will usually not receive credit. This is a nice one that we're going to talk about today. Answers, either numeric or algebraic, do not need to be simplified on the AP exam to avoid mathematical errors. Hopefully in all of our communication you have noticed if you're taking the AP exam, you're in this track one and doing our AP practice on the Canvas assignments. These are the important specifics of the AP exam. The AP exam is just going to be two free response questions, no multiple choice. The first free re response question will be a 25 minute time limit with five minutes after that to upload your solution. Your second free response question will be a 15 minute time limit with five minutes to upload that solution. So it's a 45 minute test or that almost sounds like a 50 minute test. Uh, it is on May 12th. It's a Tuesday, May 12th at 1 o'clock. You need to be on, um, logged on by 12.30 on that day. They have told us that a calculator is allowed, that you can use it while you're taking your exam, although the problems are set up to not require a calculator. But you can have it there as reference. Alrighty, so here is Unit 1, Free Response, Set A, Question Number 1. Notice a couple of things here. This is the graph of a function f. This is a table of values for the function g of x. Take some time and read some directions. If you have not, uh, let's see. A couple of things. I'm going to go through the solutions as I checked the solutions and took the test on AP Classroom also. Your solutions might need to be more specific than yours were. So I'm going to go through what the AP exam is looking for in your responses. This is not the time for you to say, couldn't I just, do I really need to? I'm going to go through the solutions as they wanted them. We might as well be prepared for what they're looking for. So again, your scores on your practice might not be what you're hoping for, but we have plenty of time. We've got, what, four or five weeks to improve our skills. So that's what this is for. Alrighty, so I'm going to look at part A using this information. Using the graph of f and the table for g, estimate the limit as x approaches 0 of f of x minus g of x. Okay, using the graph we can find the limit as x approaches 0 of f of x to be 2. Using the table we can find the limit as x approaches 0 of g of x that's right in here. As x approaches 0, my function values approach 2. Now this is where some of you lost points. In their scoring, this is one of your two points. This is a two-point section, part A. This is one point, and you needed the limit notation. This first question is reinforcing limits. And they gave you a point for that if you included the limit notation. Some of you lost that point. Alrighty, so we'll be a little bit picky with ourselves over the next few weeks. Now find the limit as x approaches 0 of that difference. And then we can separate those limits. That's the limit as x approaches 0. We can write that as a difference 
of q limits, x approaches 0 of q of x, which was from up above 2 minus 2. They said you can have approximately from the table, or you can just have equal to. You could have approximately right here or equal to. They're not picky about that. From up above, that's 2 minus 2 is equal to 0. Again, this is one point, but this answer is one point with work. And again, this is not to say the time to say, can't I just, couldn't I just. We're going to write things as they want us to write it. All right, so we have plenty of time to practice that. Let's look at this was a two-part, uh, part A was for two points. Let's move on to part B. Okay, let's read part B. For each of the following values, a equals 1, a equals 2, a equals 4, and a equals 6, find the limit as x approaches that a value for f of x, or explain why that limit does not exist. Again, we're practicing limits, so this is key. Use the correct limit notation for your answers. Part B is worth three points here, so let's see how you did or what you missed. So here's the graph of f of x, and let's see. I'm going to use correct limit notation and find the limit as x approaches 1 for f of x. As x approaches 1, please notice we have this problem, that my function values are approaching two different numbers. Okay, So we expect this does not exist. And you're right. We just need a justification because the limit as x approaches 1 from the left of f of x is equal to 1, and the limit as x approaches 1 from the right of f of x is equal to 0, since the limit as x approaches 1 from the left of that function using proper, proper limit notation is not equal to the limit as x approaches 1 from the right of that function. The limit as x approaches 1 in general of that function does not exist. So this is one of your three points with justification. Okay, so that's one point. Next for, what was it? a equals 2 and a equals 4, those were a lot cleaner. Using proper limit notation, the limit of this function as x approaches 2 is 1. And the limit as x approaches 4 of this function is negative 1. This was 1 point. Those were a lot cleaner. Okay, now let's use that graph to find the limit as x approaches 6 of that function. Actually, this limit does not exist because that function, those function values are zooming to infinity and not a number. That limit does not exist because the AP solution said since the limit as x approaches 6 from the left of that function approaches infinity and the limit as x approaches 6 from the right of that function also approaches infinity. The limit does not exist because they are, the function values are not approaching a number, a value. They're approaching infinity. So this was plus 1 with justification. Alrighty, let's move on to part C of this question. And let me see, part C of this question was a three points total, and let's see how we did. Is f continuous? Is the function f continuous at x equals negative 3? Using correct notation, justify your answer. All right. Okay, my students have many solutions to this part C. Again, I'm including the AP solutions, so we can kind of cater to what they are looking for in this problem. If f is continuous at x equals negative 3, then the calculus is we need f of negative 3 to equal the limit of that function as x approaches negative 3. From the graph, I can find 
the function value at negative 3. f of negative 3 is 2. And I can find the limit as x approaches negative 3 of that function. What, am I, what are my function values approaching as x approaches negative 3? That's negative 1. Just for your grading purposes, you got a point for the correct limit notation that some of you are missing. You got a point for the value of that limit. So again, they're big on notation. We're just going to cater to what they're looking for. These two things are not the same, so then I would wrap that up. So f is not continuous, and I'll use complete sentences, is not continuous at x equals negative 3 since f of negative 3 is not equal to the limit as x approaches negative 3 of f of x. Alrighty, and there's my justification. Correct answer with justification. Alrighty, um, also AP, this, what if you got this wrong? What if you actually said that this was positive 1 instead of negative 1 just as a sign error? You might lose this point if you said that this was positive 1, but you would still get this point for justification. You would get a point here for correct notation, you would lose a point for that answer, and you would get this point for your justification. Alrighty, so it's okay to make that mistake. You might just lose that point and get the other two. Alright, let's look at part D. Okay, part D is only a one-point question. Uh, this was a nice one for most of you. Write a difference quotient that best approximates the instantaneous rate of change. That sounds like a slope. Instantaneous rate of change of G, so now I'm on that table of values for G of X, at X equals zero, and I'm looking right around here. Alrighty. So remember, kind of slopey, that instantaneous rate of change, that it's a change of y, and I'm going to use those function values down below. So let's see, what is g of 0 0.001 minus g of negative 0 0.001, so I'm picking those x values just to the left and right of 0, over 0 0.001 minus negative 0 0.001. Okay, I'm going to plug in those function values from my table, which becomes 2.001 minus 1.999, all over 0 0.001 minus negative 0 0.001. So I can use those symmetric points on each side of 0 to approximate that instantaneous rate of change at x equals 0. We're going to stop right here. We do not need to simplify this. And that's where I'm going to come back to this part of your directions on the AP exam. Answers, either numeric or algebraic, do not need to be simplified. It is probably better to stop right here than to go any further and make a mistake. In the AP exam, the graders are fine with that right there. All right, thanks for watching. I'm going to make a new short little video for question two of unit one, free response question uh, set A. Okay, so we need a video for question two. Thanks for watching.